if you're not a roofer, if I go out and roof a elderly couple's home, they're never getting up there. They're never going to look at it. So at the end of the day, is quality really important? It is, but to that homeowner, no, it's really not because they're not going to see it anyway. As long as it's not leaking, it could be a horrible job, but if you made them feel good, they would still refer you and recommend you to all of their clients. Well, if one of our core values is always put quality first and we're, know we're, we're, we're already know we're installing a superior product, then if all we do is focus on making sure that they feel good during that process, we, can't, we literally cannot lose. All right, what's up, friends? I'm here with my buddy, Kenny Robinson of Roof Savers in Alabama. And I wanted to have Kenny on because uh, he's a relatively new business owner who has seen a decent amount, actually a very good amount of success over the past few years. And I think that uh, one of the things that he does is really kind of keep things simple and not overcomplicate it, not uh, get in his own way as, as so many of us are guilty of doing. And he's seen a lot of success as a result. Uh, and at the same time, he's, he's a very humble leader. So I think that he could share a lot of good lessons and insights and experiences with our audience. And uh, I'm excited to unpack his, his journey and some of his lessons with the audience. So what's going on, my friend? Not much. Thanks so much for having me on here. I'll have something that I say along the way to add some value in way, one way or another for somebody. But uh, living up to the intro may be a bit difficult, but I'll do my best. Awesome. Yeah. Well, hey, we've got 45 minutes. So, you know, if you can have like, you know, at least a 30 second nugget, then that's, that's all we need. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, we can just clip that, for, clip that for social media and then we can make you sound smart and everyone's good. Right. Man, it's been good to get to know you over the, over this year, uh, being a part of the champion circle and, uh, and the meetups and everything like that. And, uh, your journey has been, been really awesome. And I was, uh, grateful to learn more about it on last week's group call inside the TCC. And, uh, yeah. man, it's been, a, it's been a ride. No need to get into all those details of what, you know, currently is going on and all that stuff, but, uh, we'll get into some of the lessons, but give us an, uh, a little bit of a background as to, you know, how you, where you came from. I think how you got into the roofing industry was pretty interesting and, uh, you know, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, a little bit about my background. The one thing that a lot of people don't realize is that when I was growing up, my dad, mm -hmm did some roofing. He wasn't a full-time roofer. His father was, my grandfather was, my uncles were. So I spent a lot of time during the summers and spring breaks and that kind of stuff working. I did a lot of roofing growing up. I, did, I didn't do enough to where I would consider myself a master roofer, but I did enough to know that I didn't want to be a roofer. I needed a job that had a little more air conditioning, so I became a police officer, and I did that for 13 years. And what actually happened is... I had a, a guy that was on shift with us and he was wanting to put a new metal roof on his house. And, uh, he didn't know what he was doing, didn't know anything about construction. And I said, man, it's really not that hard. We can, we can do this. I went to his house with him. We did a takeoff, ordered the material and my entire shift, there was nine of us that showed up one morning to roof his house, put this metal roof on his house. Nobody really knew what they were doing. Um, but me and another guy there did, he, he owned a construction company part-time and he worked full-time as a police officer as well. So his name was Daniel. Me and Daniel kind of led the crew that day. And by crew, I just mean a bunch of police officers that were there trying to help a friend out. And <laughs> as the morning was getting started, one of the other officers was helping me separate the metal into different links based on different piles, based on length, how they were going to go on the roof. And uh, once we started to separate them, he dropped his side of the panel. It flexed, came out of my hand, and it basically took all the skin off of my right shin from about my knee down and it dug in and cut into my ankle really bad in the top of my foot and um, getting it real bad infected because I didn't go to the doctor. I was hard headed. I just taped it up and put a sock on it and continued to roof all day. And the next day I started having some serious issues. I ended up spending about three weeks off my feet from that injury. But what most people didn't know is I had already taken a position with a private security company working an explosive dog at the U.S. Embassy in Iraq. The week after I got hurt, I was scheduled to report to Atlanta, do my physical agility stuff, and then I had a two-week break before I started training and went overseas. So I was going to wait until I knew for sure I passed the physical agility stuff because I'm getting older, I'm a little bigger than I used to be, and uh, I wanted to make sure I had that under wraps. 
before I turned in a notice and let my job know that I was leaving to go overseas. So they, they weren't aware of that either. And when I got hurt, I was telling everybody I'll be fine. I'll be back to work in a couple of weeks. I hurt my leg roofing Jamie's house is what I kept saying. Your iPhone listens to everything you say. I started seeing roofing advertisements. I saw an advertisement for the product Roof Max, which if you're not familiar with it, product that stores a life of shingle roofs. Decided to become a Roof Max dealer. And uh, we had a lot of success very early on. We had a huge week our first week. And before before our first month was out, I was personal friends with the CEO, helping him design and build kitchen table presentations for everybody across the country. And uh, wasn't really sure why what I was doing was working or what I was doing that was working. I was just doing a lot of it instinctively, like just be living in the moment, not being scared to take action. It was working out. And uh, I went home and told my wife one day, I was like, you know, Macy, if we go ahead and get licensed and start replacing these roofs that don't qualify for roof max, we could make a lot more money. And uh, we might have an opportunity here to, to legitimately build a big business, something I've always wanted my whole life and just never really took much action. I didn't have no faith. I didn't have I didn't have the confidence in myself that I knew that I would need to go out and build something like that for sure. So we kind of accidentally found ourselves starting a roofing company and um, it has just been a, a roller coaster of a ride since then, man. We've had some crazy highs, some lows. We've had a year behind a hurricane where we did just under uh, 5 million gross sales and uh, actually lost money that year. I paid, you know, $5 million to roof people's houses. And, uh, and then this year, after hiring Mike last year, Champion Circle, I was having some issues, hired a business coach, and um, we're, we're back highly profitable now and um, doing great. And we currently own a couple businesses, a couple very successful businesses, the roofing company obviously being the biz- biggest, most successful of the of the ones that we do have. Wow, that's awesome. Ups and downs for sure. We all experienced those. I One nugget I took out of there, which I hadn't heard before, is that you were targeted uh, with a RoofMax ad because you know you were talking about roofing on your phone and things like that. Man, that's that's the that's the power of like you know targeting the right people with the right message at the right time. You know, obviously that that ad didn't know that you were you know potentially looking for a new opportunity, but that's the power of this like social media marketing and advertising that that we do a lot of. We train our clients on. Um, that's that's pretty cool how that kind of got in front of you like that. It is. You know, something that's really interesting since what we're trying to do here is add some value for the people listening. That's that's our goal. Right. So I realized something in that moment that never had hit me before. So I think I think for a long time I was doing what a lot of people were doing. I was sitting around. I was, for example, I would see like a nice truck and I wanted this nice truck. And I was like, come on, God, please. I want this nice truck. And he was like, okay, here's an opportunity. These opportunities have been around me. Yep. My entire life. And I've never, I looked at everything completely wrong. So now I'm acutely aware of my surroundings and just like, and the people in the, that are listening didn't hear us speaking before we got on here and started recording. But I was just telling Joseph that we are moving offices and I have root this building and happened to talk to a guy and figure out he was trying to, to uh, lease part of it as an Airbnb and work a deal where I rented the entire building. So now me and my family this week are moving. We're going to live above our warehouse, which is a great situation for us. But had I not had that mindset shift, a couple of years ago, I would have just been there roofing, talking to him like a normal, every, every client, making sure he was happy with the process and went on. But I, anytime I see something that looks like it could potentially be an opportunity, I, I at least invest my time in, in exploring it in asking questions and being open to everything around me at all times. Because I, I believe what happens a lot of times people are, are, are praying for results, praying for an outcome. Or, you know, if you don't pray, if you're not religious, then the same principle applies. They're still hoping something happens that gets them out of the current situation that they're in. And the whole time you have all this opportunity around you. But because you're so focused on the item or the result, you're not actually open and paying attention to the vehicle to achieve all that could be 
anywhere at any time. Yeah, that's interesting. What do they say that uh, that phrase? I'm going to butcher it, but it's like you know, most people don't recognize opportunity because it's it's dressed in work clothes and they're right. dressed in overall overalls and uh, right. or coveralls. It looks like that's work it. or something like that. Yeah, opportunity. What? It looks like hard work to most people. Yeah, yeah. There you go. <laughs> I butchered the hell out of that one. Um, that's just yeah, my, so I, I, that's just the way, that was my spin on it. <laughs> what um. So you had this this kind of, you know, something you said you always wanted to do was build a business. You wanted the truck. And like, what was that mindset shift where you're like, you know what, this roof max thing, you know, maybe this isn't something worth exploring. Like, why that opportunity? Why that moment in time? Did you decide to say, hey, maybe I can have some confidence in myself enough to like at least take the first step here? Yeah, for sure. I'll get into it a little more. It's going to take a little time. But not only it for, for me it wasn't just that video and this this one opportunity going back about six months before this we had found out my wife was pregnant and she had an idea that we needed a bigger house and because she's pregnant this house isn't going to work for us we're adding to the family so we listed our home sold it made a profit off of it used that to pay off a lot of credit card debt some other stuff we're fixing to move into a, uh, a rental until we decided what we wanted to do permanently. And her parents made us an offer. They were like, hey, why don't you just stay with us for a few months until y'all figure things out? We have a few extra bedrooms and you won't be in the way. So we decided to do that and continue to take that savings and pay our debt down. Because you got to remember, I was a police officer. She worked as a dispatcher at the sheriff's office and we lived paycheck to paycheck. When I say broke, we were very broke very broke and with selling the house everything that went with the, the little bit of money we made paying the credit card debt down everything that happened through that entire process all the way up to me getting hurt went then seeing the opportunity and i reached out to roof max and it was a thirty thousand dollar investment up front and i had like thirty one thousand dollars to my name so and i had zero dollars six months before that and I had never had more than five thousand dollars in my in any account that I own my entire life. I've been I had been, I I was raised broke, raised I don't want to use the word poor. I believe poor is a mindset, but we were broke. I was a happy child. We just didn't have any money. And I think it wasn't just the opportunity. I think it was everything that happened before that to when the when I finally got the opportunity and saw what it was, I could connect a bunch of dots looking back over the last six months. And I said, if there's ever been a moment in my life where I feel like God is pushing me in a direction, I think it's this direction. And my and Macy was kind of like, you don't really know that much about roofing. And I was like, but I do see you didn't know me when I used to do roofing. I do know roofing. And uh, I said, we can do this. I said, we can certainly do this. And um, she didn't believe me. And she said, if you can convince my dad, then you have my support. So I sat down at the kitchen table and sold my first roof mac appointment to uh, her father. He he was he bought in for sure and said he thought it was an amazing idea. And uh, here we are. And just so everybody knows, we made our first dollar as business owners July 29th, 2019. So we are just a little over three years in business. And I remember that day because July 29th is also our anniversary. So my first tote of RoofMax product showed up to our house July 29th. I sprayed two jobs that day. I made more money my first day as a business owner than I did in two months as a police officer. That's how crazy it was. Well, I did that much revenue my first day. Profit and revenue are two different things. But I, 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 we did more revenue my first day that I could go out and make money than I used to do in two months as a cop. And that's when I, was, I said, hey, I think I think we were thinking really small. I don't. I don't believe we really truly have even grasped how big this could be. And uh, so she did what any smart mother of five would do, and she quit her job that day. <laughs> and we, and she, she went all in. But at that point, I had been working and, and, and trying to convince her that it was a good idea. So when she was like, we, "We got this. I can. I can run the office. I can answer the phones." And then on your off days, because I worked a, a split shift with the police department in a two week period, I worked seven days and was off for seven. I had time to do the work. And that's how we started. man. we, we started it together and uh, we've grown a pretty big team now. And um, it's been a blessing for sure. 
Wow. That's amazing. I mean, that, I'm sure that was a giant mindset shift. You're like, wow, I just made as much in revenue today than I did in the past two months. Like that's, that's mind blowing. Sure. Um, wow. For sure. Awesome story. Thanks for sharing. Awesome that you guys had the faith that your wife had the faith that Macy had the faith to go in and, and, and jump in with you. She saw that, uh, that confidence that you had. Uh, so fast forward to today, give us a snapshot of what the business is. You do roof max and you also do replacements. I, I believe, right. Uh, tell us about we the do. business. And, that, and, and, and for me, I believe that's why we got to the point to where we were, we've made it to so fast is because even early on, I wasn't trying to replace roofs. I still didn't have the confidence that I needed. I went out, I, one of my best friends from childhood had been a full-time roofer since he was probably nine years old. I can remember his dad picking him up after school with, with in, in his pickup truck with a lunch pail and a, and a thermos of water and would go drop him off at a house they were roofing tomorrow at, at nine and 10. And his job was to carry shingles to, to load the roof for the crew tomorrow. They would tear off dry in take his little nine-year-old body over there to put the shingles on the roof while they tore off and dried in another house. And that's how they did it every day. And I reached out wow. to him. He had, he was about a year out from selling a roofing company he built himself and he partnered with another guy and they started a metal distribution center here locally, like metal roofing distribution center. And um, I reached out to him and told him what I was doing and uh, he thought it was a scam. Roofmax was a, a scam. And so I started offering to pay him like $500 to come change a pipe boot just to get him out on the jobs and, and pick his brain. So a lot of the money I was making up front, I didn't even keep. I had come from zero, was broke, but I was still taking all the money I was making and investing it in myself and learning the trade. So I didn't, I didn't ever want to have a situation where if somebody asked me a question, I didn't know how to answer it or if, I was presented with a problem. I wanted to be able to fix it. I didn't want to have to refer them to someone else. So I, I took all the money I was making up front, got him out on jobs. And about two months into this, he came out on a job with me and he said, how many roofs have you looked at this week? And I said, man, I think like 15. And he was like, how? And I was like, I said, I don't know. I just, I run Facebook ads. I post on Facebook. I talk to people. I make sure I, you know, I build good rapport. I'm getting a ton of referrals. And he said, holy cow. And he said, man, I think you're doing something really big here. And he said, uh, you need to start replacing roofs. And that's when I went home and had the conversation with Macy. And I thought, you know, I don't know enough about roofing. I, I did. I didn't have enough belief in myself to start the company by myself. So what I did is I, I, I let him come in as a partner. So I gave him 50% of a company that already existed just so I would have that roofer with me at all times. And um, that lasted, that partnership lasted a little over a year. And not, not that anybody was doing anything wrong. We were doing amazing. We were making money. But I started seeing that it wasn't sustainable. We were spending too much money. We were writing ourselves too big of checks. And I said, we're gonna, we will go out of business next winter without a doubt. There's no way we survive this year the way we're currently going. And so I made him an offer and bought him out. And then I went about a year without making any profit just to make sure that the business didn't go out of business. And during that year, I learned so much about myself. I learned that I'm capable of running probably any company that exists as long as I invest in myself and get the knowledge necessary to, to be with whatever that industry or whatever it may be. And, um, and through staying positive and still building a, an amazing brand, we won roofing contractor of the year right on the heels of that buyout and everything here locally. We were only... We, we finished second place the first year, and then, then right after the buyout, we, we won first place. And um, I was a member of the champion circle, hanging out with brilliant minds like yourself, learning how to market, learning how to, to talk, how to post, how to conduct myself. And um, that stuff shows up. People around you are watching, even when you don't think they are, because I get a phone call from Steve one day, and he said, hey, man. I really want to be great. And I see you working on yourself. I see you making a ton of positive posts. Y'all won roofing contractor of the year. He said, I don't know if you want me back or wouldn't want me back. But he said, if, if there's ever a place for me at that company, I would love to be there. And I hired him the same day on that call. 
I said, this is what I'll pay you to come back in the role of a production manager. And it was a lot more than he was making at his current job. And uh, he came right back and has been with me ever since. And we're doing absolutely amazing. In, in a time two years behind the hurricane, when 70% of the roofs 10 years old and older were replaced, we're still busy. We're still making money. We've got roofing contractors all around us that are dropping and going out of business. And uh, I just bought two trucks or I haven't purchased them yet, but I'm talking to another roofing company owner about purchasing two vehicles from him. He's selling off inventory and stuff to try to not go out of business. And we just finished our biggest two months ever, even behind the hurricane. So we're, we're doing, we're doing amazing. And um, I truly believe it comes from the roof max. Like we were talking about when I, when I went off on this little bit of a, a tangent, but it, what it was is I didn't want to replace roofs. I just wanted to save them and save people money. And when I got licensed to replace roof, I kept the same mentality. I want to do whatever's best for you and your situation. And that's not always replacement. So if I can save it and save you money, that's what we want to do. When it comes time to actually replace that roof, I'm going to get that replacement. You've built so much rapport. And so I've already, I've been helping you for five years at this point, save money. There's no way you're going to go with another roofing company. So when I shifted all my marketing, I don't, I let the community know I don't want to replace your roof. What I want to do is come out, save you money, and we'll replace it if it's necessary. And by doing that, we now technically get the first look at almost every roofing project in our market because people want to know if roof savers can save it before they replace it. And because of that marketing, we replace more roofs than our competition. Isn't that interesting? That's amazing. It is very um, interesting. That's awesome. One of our core values is uh, that we're a trusted advisor to our market. And it means pretty much exactly that. Like we're going to help our, you know, anyone that we interact with be better off, more knowledgeable, whatever it is, whether that means working with us or not. And, uh, and people can see that, right? People can feel that it's a tangible sure. thing. They know they can feel your intentions. Um, and so that's, that's really cool, man. That's, that's awesome. I've actually went out to a roof about two months ago and met with this lady and um, she, she did need a replacement and she was on a budget. She couldn't really afford much. She called me about a week after I give her an estimate for replacement and told me she was so sorry, but she was going to have to go with someone else because it was cheaper. And I just told her, you know, you're not always comparing apples to apples. She sent me that estimate. I looked at it and I said, if they're doing everything in the estimate, they're using the material they say they're using. This isn't a bad deal. I was like, I can't, I can't do it for that amount of money. But if they do quality work, you're getting a good deal at this price. She went with that company and sent, and I've roofed three houses since then that she referred us to. She didn't even refer the company that she did business with. She's still referring us on Facebook and everything every day. So that just goes to show you, if you build the right rapport and treat people the right way, even when you won't drop your price, they'll still refer you because they know you're doing it with integrity. They know you're being honest. They know you truly have your client's best interest at heart. So why wouldn't you send that guy to all your friends and family? And, and I thought that was a special one because we didn't even do her work. That is really, that's so awesome. That is, that's, that's awesome, man. Good work. We actually had something similar happen today. Uh, this this uh, gentleman I know through the roofing industry was a salesman for a while. You know, got screwed by a couple of roofing companies that he worked for. Shocker, right? Uh, but he started his own roofing company. I think just like two months ago. And uh, someone on Facebook in one of the groups, I think, was asking for you know, like marketing training or something like that. Like exactly what we do. And he like tagged me and gave this like, hey, you should definitely call these guys. You know, they'll help you out, that sort of thing. We've never worked with this guy who, who tagged us. And uh, I, I sent him a message on Facebook. and I was like, hey, thanks so much. I appreciate it. And he's like, yeah, man, just I'm just starting out. You know, once I get going and get some momentum, I definitely want to work with you guys. So, you know, that's cool. Just being out there consistently. You never know. You know, I always talk about it. Like you're, you're, not, you're not always marketing to your next customer. You're marketing to anyone that's in a position to refer, to recommend. I know you guys get tagged all the time in, in the local Facebook groups. Like that's, that's part of branding. And on that topic, on, on that topic, I, I, I want to get into that. You know, you talked about having your best two months ever and the last two months, and there's other, other roofers in your area going out of business. I think that people listening or watching this right now are like, okay, what is Kenny doing 
that is different? You know, why is he in the op- in the position to to buy up his competitors' trucks and continue to grow when other guys are trying to stay in business? Like, what have you been doing, man? Like, what's what's the secret sauce? Let's go. The secret sauce is getting everybody that's on the team to buy into the mission. And so what I did, and I did it with, with our, our purpose, our mission is to revolutionize an industry and change the way that people view roofing. So when I say that to my team, when we talk that way, they realize that this is serious. So I, we, I set the precedence. We're going to revolutionize an industry and change the way people view roofing because of all the contractors, all the trades out there, for whatever reason, I know you're heavily involved in the roofing industry. Roofers aren't trusted. People people don't like to talk to them. They don't like to have them at your house. So my whole goal is we're going to change that perception. That's what we're. That's our focus. We're not focusing on revenue. We're not focusing on profit. We're not focusing on anything. We're we're focusing on that and our client experience. Those are the two things we're putting all of our emphasis on. So I built core values around the word change because that's what we're doing is changing the perception of an entire industry here locally as well is 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 our mission so our the c in change is communicate proactively the h is handle everything with integrity the a is always put quality first the n is never stop growing the G is go above and beyond with a help first mentality. And the E is extend first, replace last. We're making a difference financially for our clients and environmentally for everyone else. We're keeping shingles out of landfills. That's what we do. We also replace wow. them. But those are our core values. And that last one is aimed directly at my sales reps. It's, it's a core value. It's how we hire. It's how we fire. It's how we promote, demote, discipline. Everything go, happens, happens within that mission statement and those core values. So if I have a sales rep that goes out to Joe's house this weekend and you're like, hey, man, I need a new roof. And he looks at it and he's like, yep, you sure do. And he sells you a new roof. All those photos, our, our process, our sales process goes into the system. If I happen to pull that up and see those photos and I can tell that that roof, for example, a candidate for roof max, or if it was a metal roof and we could have did a rescrew or whatever the case may be, if I look at it and I see there was a situation where we could have saved somebody money, which in turn means we make less money, right? So it's a backwards way of thinking. But if I see that happen, I'll set that sales rep down and let him know, did you educate Joe and let him know that RoofMax was an option here? Or did you just go for the bigger ticket item so you could make more commission? And if they didn't take the time to educate Joe, show him pictures and let him know all of his options, they no longer work here. It's, it's in their contract. That's not who we are. It's not what we do. We don't just go out and try to sell the most expensive thing. We literally help people. And if I catch you not helping people, you're going to not help people at another company. It'll no longer be at this one. So that's what we did. I just set the standard and said, this is who we are. This is how we're going to operate. And because of that, we do get tagged. You can't mention the word roofing on Facebook within a 50 mile radius of where we're located. And If there's 30 comments on there, 20 to 25 of them are roof savers. And most of them say, Jonathan, who's one of my sales reps, or Aaron, my production manager, or Aaron's operation, Steve is production, or Macy, my wife. You don't know how many times I see Macy Robinson tagged in Roof and Post. And it's like girls and people she went to high school with. It's like, make sure you call Macy. Her and her husband will make sure you might not even need a new roof. You know, that's what's that's out there now. So just so we're clear, in the last two months, we've been moving and I've been worried about uh, production and and being able to. So I I just have slowly dialed my expense on marketing back and I've probably spent less than I've spent less than eight thousand dollars in the last two months on marketing and um, are doing uh, quite a bit of work, several hundred thousand dollars worth of work per month and barely spending anything marketing. And it's all that word of mouth. It's all getting referred in Facebook. It's networking, all that. And, and, and the brand and the mission that we've put out there and, and the community is now aware of it. And it's a trusted, reliable brand. And that's, that's, that's why we're busy. There's no, there's just no other way to explain it. 
That's cool, man. I mean, you're we're a marketing training company, but I always say like your product is your best marketing, right? That's your your customer experience, the way that you you know work with people, communicate. Like that is your best marketing. So that's cool. And and I know this is like it's who you are. It's it's what you're all about. Your core values. Uh, but there's this like concept in marketing. It's like, are you like a better mousetrap? Are you like a better roofing company or are you like a different way to look at your roof, like a new opportunity, a new vehicle? And that comes from Russell Brunson. But I think that people will probably look at, at roof savers is like, all right, well, there's a, you know, a million roofing companies over here. They're going to try to sell you a roof. But like these guys are different because they're looking to help you. They're looking to save you money. And I think that probably helps you guys stand out a lot in addition to your core values and your team and your, your awesome products as well. It, it does. And anytime we go out there, I, I'll get people, you know, they'll leave a review or, or make a post and, and share their experience with us. On, I called them out because I needed a new roof and they were so honest. They let me know that I didn't actually need a new roof. We could save a bunch of money if we went this route. And I was able to even get a five-year guarantee. So in five years, when it's time to replace a roof, I already know who I'm using. Like that is out there. And it's out there so much that now we have people call. And before, years ago, you know, two, three years ago, I would answer the phone and somebody would say, hey, can you tell me a little bit about this RoofMax product that y'all use, for example? And I would start explaining it. We would talk through it. And now I'll answer the phone, you know, roof savers, and then say, hey, this is Joseph. I, uh was looking at some of your ads. I went on your face on your on your Facebook page, checked out your website, and I was wondering if I could get somebody to come out and let me know if my roof is a candidate for RoofMax. You see what I mean? People are using words like is my roof a candidate? Not cuz we've done such a good job with putting the messaging and everything out there that by the time they call us now, they already know what they want. They just want to know if they can afford it and if their roof qualifies. So our close rate on like for example, RoofMax is like 75% right now. Everyone that I go to, if it's a candidate, I close three out of four. Wow. That's awesome. And I'm, I'm guessing it's pretty profitable as well, huh? It is. It's, it's, it's very profitable. It's highly profitable. It's 80% cheaper than replacement. And my margins are still, at times, can be above 50%. All right. Nice, nice. Yeah. So going back to that question I asked you, like, how are you able to thrive the last couple of months when other guys are going out of business? I think people listening or watching would have, um, you know, they were probably hoping for you to say, you know, hey, I found this this way to get like, you know, high quality exclusive leads or, you know, I found this technique that no one really knows about. Uh, but what you shared is is not that. It's uh, something that maybe people did not expect. And and I know that you've done some, you know, coaching and some advising other maybe Roofmax dealers, other companies at this point. I know it's something that you're passionate about. Where do you see other contractors, you know, maybe get stuck or get in their own way or maybe have like the wrong, you know, motivations behind what they're doing uh, that might cause them to get stuck? Like, do you have any any uh, any feedback there? In in my in my honest opinion, I believe the biggest downfall for most contractors is they're chasing revenue. They're chasing a big revenue number. And so over the last two years, I've come to understand that the only number that truly matters at the end of the day in business is your net profit. How much money are you keeping? I don't care about the revenue. Like, don't get me wrong. I set goals. We have vision boards. We do all of that stuff, too. We have targets. But at the end of the day, as long as everybody that we're doing business with has a good experience, and then I'm happy. And, and that's what I try to tell my team, too, is, is if you're not a roofer, if I go out and roof a elderly couple's home, they're never getting up there. They're never going to look at it. So at the end of the day, is quality really important? It is. But to that homeowner... No, it's really not because they don't going to see it anyway. As long as it's not leaking, it could be a horrible job. But if you made them feel good, they would still refer you and recommend you to all of their clients. Well, if one of our core values is always put quality first and we're, know we're, we're, we're already know we're installing a superior product, then if all we do is focus on making sure that they feel good during that process, we, can't, we literally cannot lose. You just can't because at the end of the day, Two months from now, 
if you get on Facebook and I see a post and it's asking for a roofer and I just had my roof replaced two months ago, if they made me feel good, if I like them, say if it was you who did it and I like Joe, I'm like, man, I like Joe. He's a great guy. And they made me feel real important. I love the way the experience went. I'm going to refer you to everybody else. And if I didn't, let's just say you did a, an amazing job, the best roof that could possibly ever go on a house, but you didn't take the time to talk to me and explain things. I never felt important. Then I just gave you your money. I was just another paycheck for you. There's no relationship there. There's no there's a word that I'm looking for. I, I don't know what it is, but there's it's just that the relationship doesn't exist. The faith the in the brand isn't there. So a lot of times those people just won't get on Facebook and, ref and recommend anybody. They're like, well, he did a good job. I'm not going to recommend anybody else because I don't want to make them mad. And it's just, that, that's just the end of it. Where with us, we put so much focus and emphasis on the client experience that they're out telling everybody. And they're like, hey, call Roof Savers. Macy was amazing on the phone. Aaron did a great job letting us know when they were going to be here. We, we, we were informed every step of the way. Once Steve got out here, man, that guy knows so much about roofing. He didn't let anything happen. And like by now, I'm, most of the time, I'm only making contact with them up front doing sales. And I don't see them through the rest of the process. And we're still getting five-star reviews because my entire team is bought in. So no matter who goes out there or who they talk to, they're going to have a great experience because that's what we put the most emphasis on is client experience. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. That reminds me of uh, one of the sayings that our buddy Clifton Muckinfu says all the time. I just talked to him yesterday. We were talking about this and he said, uh, it is not your customer's job to remember you. It is your job as a company to make sure that they never forget you. And right. uh, that, it's amazing. And I think it's, you know, it starts obviously with that client experience. And then there's other things that you can do to kind of keep in touch with them and stay top of mind and all that good stuff. But just doing the bare minimum is not going to be enough to have them, you know, go out of their way to, to refer or recommend you, right? It's not. And, and another thing I think happens is a lot of contractors go out there, like I said, just looking for a paycheck, looking to make the money. And they don't take the time to answer small questions like for example i had steve call me the other day and we were talking he's like man this guy keeps calling me he's like he's a nightmare to deal with and i said yeah but if you take it like put yourself in his shoes he was this was an elderly gentleman in his 80s doesn't know anything about roofing has heard horror stories about roofing contractors he keeps calling you and asking you questions all he really wants is for you to make him feel good about doing business with you. He's he, There's stress right now in his life. I said, so take the extra time and talk to him. Make sure he's comfortable and watch what happens. Like I already know because of the extra time he spent with it. And, and I don't I hate the shift real quick, but I'm going to tell you one other quick story because I know we're limited on time. We put a new roof on a house for a lady and this is this is exactly what I'm talking about. She was one of those nightmare clients. She stayed stood outside the whole time, wanted Steve on the job the entire time, talked about how roofers are sketchy. I mean, this was a two day probably the hardest two days worth of work we've done just because of how much we had to cater to her. Two days later, we get a phone call and it was a neighbor across the street two houses down had already hired a contractor to replace their roof, called and got out of that contract and called us to come do her roof because she said, if you can make her happy, she's like, you're the one I want to do my roof. That's what she said. And, her, and <laughs> she was raving. She, she was walking the neighborhood talking about how awesome we were. And people in that neighborhood, literally a lady called and she said, if you can make her happy, I want to use you. So we actually took a roof from another contractor just because of the extra time we were spending with her. That wasn't even the goal, but that's what that's how important it is to just go a little above and beyond to make sure that client experience is is top shelf. That's awesome, man. That's hilarious. Like everyone knows that lady is being tough. I'm sure maybe cr the cranky old lady. Every neighborhood has one, but yeah, I mean oh, yeah, most sure. most roofing companies would have been like, all right, we got this pain in the ass client. Let's like. Let's get in and get out as fast as we can and let's move on. But you guys, you know, you did the right thing. And and uh, not only did you make make her happy, but you got more business out of it. So everyone wins. That's uh, that's awesome, man. Yeah. As we wrap up, I know we only have a few minutes, but uh, you've shared a lot of 
you share a lot of really good nuggets. Um, you know, a lot of aspects from your journey, which I know is uh, is just beginning. What's next for Roof Savers and Kenny and Macy, and you know, what's what's coming up? Man, you know, I don't I don't know because it's going to be big. I can tell you that we're headed to uh, to great places, but it's like. It's like I, I, I figured out the ability, not, not, that's maybe not the right way to put it, but like, for example, I'll show you real quick. And uh, so I can see myself, I had something lean on my screen, but like this, this is a, a wallpaper. It's just something I put up. So it looks like I have some exposed brick behind me when I'm doing podcasts and this kind of stuff. The new office that we're currently moving into, like my whole team is, is if I showed you around here, it's, it's total chaos. It's a, it's a very busy week for us. The new office I'm moving into has real beautiful exposed brick and everything. So the room that I'm fixing to set up for doing my podcast and my interviews and all of that is like the real life version of what I was trying to create here. And that's just like, it just goes to show you that what you put into the universe is what you get back because when I was thinking of a backdrop, there's a there's a million ways you could do it, and I was thinking I just want uh, like a, a real pretty exposed brick look, and uh, that's what I did, and and now I have the the legitimate exposed brick in my in my new room that'll be rolling out here in the next couple of weeks. But man, it's in the future. Anytime I think something is my, you know, minuscule, insignificant, don't lose focus and don't, don't, don't let it distract you from amazing customer experience and looking out for people and quit trying to sell to people and figure out what they need, figure out how you can help them. You become a facilitator of help. You no longer have to worry about sales. Awesome, man. That's like a real, it's a real live vision board. You have the the wallpaper, brick wallpaper. I have one of those backdrops as well. I I used it uh, a couple of years ago during, you know, and everyone was kind of locked down and all that sort of thing. But uh, that's, uh, it's an amazing, amazing transformation from the the brick wallpaper to the real brick. So congrats on that. And, And thanks so much for sharing all your, you know, all of your experience and your insight in this, you know, microwave, get rich quick, instant gratification world. I think there's, you know, too many folks out there looking for the hack, looking for the trick, looking for like the thing they don't know about. And like what you shared today is like, man, it's, it's simple, you know, it's caring, it's core values, it's building a culture, it's doing the right thing is always the right thing. And that's how you build a real business. So I hope that I really hope that people take this to heart and really give some thought as to, you know, how they can build a better business or, you know, people are just starting out, you know, they can, they can look to you and say, all right, well, this is how Kenny do, did it. This is how I want to be. This is mm-hmm. what I want to be. Sure. So thanks so much for sharing, brother. I, I appreciate it. I was, it was a pleasure to come on and be able to answer some of the questions and talk and share my story. It's a, uh, it's been a great process and I love, I love talking about it. All right, cool. If people want to connect with you or follow your, your positive content that you mentioned before, uh, or check out Roof Savers. Where can they find you, Kenny? They can find um, me or Roof Savers on Facebook, Instagram, all of those social platforms. And uh, I finally am going to roll out my own podcast here in the coming weeks as we final finish up this move and everything. So I don't have a name for it yet, but hopefully at some point, if uh, people watch this on Facebook, I'll go back after the fact and add a comment and let them know if they want to find some more stuff in the future where they can find me. But it's been a pleasure to be on here. And each time I do one of these, I just answer questions. And man, it's like, I don't want to call it lucky because it was a lot of hard work, but instinctively I was doing a lot of the right things without realizing what I was doing or why it was working. And once I got around you and Mike and the champion circle, and I was like, man, this is why we're having a success. They're like, you got to do this. And I'm like, we well, see, we've been doing that and didn't even realize it. So it's very important. Very important. Awesome, man. Well, yeah, you've been an inspiration to me as well. And I, uh, thanks again. I look forward to seeing you soon. Absolutely. Man. Thank you for having me.